So a very good evening and welcome along to Irish Whiskey Review. It's our weekly look at the world of whiskey. And uh, well, Marty's sitting there ready and waiting for us this evening. Uh, yeah, uh, peated Irish whiskey. Now, the eagle-eyed of you will notice these are peated Scotch whiskies. But I, I'll, I'll explain all later. Uh, my, we, we have a little thing to do to start with, Justin, as you know. We we do we do we do uh, uh, Irish whiskey. A peated Irish whiskey was nearly extinct, but wasn't it? Uh, well, it never really was, Justin. It never really was. Uh, there's this common misconception that all Scotch whiskey's peated and all Irish is triple distilled, unpeated, and it's just nonsense. It's not actually true in any way, shape, or form. Um, there's there's always been Peter Irish whiskey, always, uh, but <laughs> lots of it wasn't government whiskey is maybe a good way of putting it. A lot of it was illegal, uh, but a lot of it wasn't either. There was lots and lots and lots of, of Peter Irish whiskey. Uh, anyone who doesn't know what peat is, this is a lump of peat. Is, is this like playing a furrow? Is this like playing a furrow? Is it? Well, this this was like stealing this from my uh, stepsister's next door neighbour this afternoon. Where I <laughs> <laughs> Here, as long as you didn't steal it from your stepsister, you're all right. That's all right. Now, now listen, Mark Kerr's in already, and, and he doesn't know this, but we have done this especially for him. Yes. Without without further ado, we apologise for the audio quality, but we'll take it away. Here you go. Watch this, Mark. So we've got a bit of a special uh, tasting tonight for you because we're about to try something which we got given by a very, very, very special friend of the show, and uh, Marty, you're standing by for us there. Uh, who have we got tonight? Uh, sort of that uh, was very generous and delivered something to us. We have one of our uh, regular viewers, uh, lovely Mark Kerr, when he was 50, was given a bottle of Glen Grant 50 year old single malt. And he, he was very kind and gave us a little bottle, a little sample of this. Uh, so you and I are going to try it ourselves. Okay, now I have no idea what to expect uh, from this at all. No idea whatsoever what to expect. So we are going to try it uh, at the same time. I, I, I've been rather cheeky and I have tried it already. Uh, so we will uh, we'll, we'll try it together. So here we go, here we go. Listen, bottoms up. Now, first the nose, Justin, the nose first. And you can smell already. You can smell that the, 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 there's The internet has, has let us down, of all things. Uh, so, I, I don't know what that's about. Uh, the internet is keeled over on us. It, uh, it it won't play for us, unfortunately, Marty. And, and I've checked it already tonight. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> we, 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 nev we never win. We never win. These, 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 glitches, these glitches are going to kill me, I can tell you that much. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll maybe just give a little narration of what, what was supposed to be on video there. Mm -hmm. Very generously, um, gave Justin and I a sample bottle of a whiskey that he had been given for his 50th birthday. Uh, it was a Glen Grant 50 year old whiskey, 50 years in the barrel. And he very generously gave down a little bottle for Justin and I to sample, which we did the other day uh, he hold on it seems to have been going it's decided to go again we'll see if it takes it this time we're about to try something which we got given by a very 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 special friend of the show and uh, marty you're standing by for us there uh who have we got tonight uh sort of that uh, was very generous and delivered something to us we have one of our uh, regular viewers uh lovely mark Kerr. When he was 50, was given a bottle of Glen Grant 50-year-old single malt. 
um, he, he was very kind and gave us a little bottle, a little sample of this. Um, so you and I are going to try it ourselves. Okay, now I have no idea what to expect uh, from this at all. No idea whatsoever what to expect. So we are going to try it uh, at the same time. I, I, I've been rather cheeky and I have tried it already. Uh, so we will uh, we'll, we'll try it together. So here we go. Here we go. Listen, bottoms up. Now, first the nose, Justin. The nose first. And you can smell already. You can smell that the, 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 there's lots of wood there. There's lots of old wood. It smells, it smells almost like, like a library. <coughs> it's got a lovely oily note to it. It's, it's, it's walnut. There's a sherry. Sherry influence is there, but it's not overpowering. Everything, everything's working in balance. When you, when you pick something up that's that old and hasn't become astringent, there's no bitter flavours come from the wood, from the cask. What, you, what you're getting there is re really uh, time has, has, has moulded and blended this all into a, a lovely harmonious sort of. Uh, it, it's a product that, that has been allowed to age and take on the characteristics of, of the cask. The cask's the key here. The spirit has to be good to start with, but when you've got something that old, and the conditions and the environment that it's going to have to be set in, and being allowed to sit for 50 years, it's mellowed out, it's become, there's a slight, a slight musty flavour to it. You, you know like, when you go, in, go into an old, an old room, an old library and that, that almost that dust it's comforting it's warming it's it's fabulous man. i mean i i took a little sneaky pick pick of this myself beforehand and i i'm not an expert like you i thought to myself i'm mistaken marty's going to say this is this is nothing special but uh you know Hats off to Hats off. to Mark to Mark Thank Kerr. You very yeah. Much. yeah, Thank you very much. Yeah, it's not often you get to try something like this. See if you put it around your glass and you watch. And you see the runs that are coming down. The, some people in wine they call this legs. Sometimes, sometimes in Ireland people will call these the writer's tears. And you can see, but you can see the oil running down. And whenever you can tell that the. the viscosity of the, of the, <coughs> the liquid, it's all the oils that have come out of the wood into this over that long, long period of time. Um, you have all the fieriness will be mellowed out. So that when you make a raw spirit, it, it, it's fiery, it's very burning. People people go, oh my god, that's very harsh. And that, that, lots of these chemicals, lots of the congeners in the, in the, the remake spirit are basically an assault to the senses. That's why when they go in there and they're cast, the, the cast works with it and lots of these over a period of time are almost filtered out. Um, and that's what you're getting here. Now, it's not very often you get the taste of 50 year old whiskey, so. often talk about mouthfeel being a real sign of quality and that as soon as it comes into the mouth the whole mouth is covered and it, it, so it's all encompassing it's like it's a good quality chocolate it goes in and it covers the mouth and you're getting again there's that little aged note that you get when you go into if you go into uh, rooms at a castle you know one of these old Libraries in the castle, there's a, there's a certain note there. And it's, a, it's that that's coming through. There's no harsh chemical there, it's nice and balanced. You're getting walnuts, lots of woody influence, but balanced. The, the, the sherry sweetness coming through there. Again, it's not sick and really sweet. It, 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 it feels like a, 
natural. There's almost a tiny rum-like quality to this because it's got that, that dark sugar, sort of muscovado sugar, almost like a treacle, tiny little treacle milk to it. And it's really well balanced. What kind of money would you say was on, on, on something like that, Marty? Because people always want to ask the question, you know, what kind of money's on it? Because it's a, it's a, th this was a special present, I think, for him, wasn't it? For, for, you know, it was the same age he was, same year he was born or something like that. There, it, 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 it true, it truly is fantastic. Super, um, a thousand pounds, easy, maybe three thousand pounds for a bottle of this. Um, but when you consider what it is you're buying, you're buying the craft, the care, the the, the age, the history. The, the story now behind it. Um, what, is, I mean, what, what is a thousand pounds? It's, 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 it's a nice amount of pounds. It's, 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 it's a nice amount of money. Someone gave me a thousand pounds as well and press with it. You can't buy an experience like that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll leave it there. That's so we just couldn't do it again, I'm afraid. Uh, so that's why we had to live with a buzz. The interference uh, wasn't visible, but it was audible on playback. So sorry about that. We're back in the room, Marty. Uh, we just wanted to say that big thank you to Mark Kerr there. for, uh, And he also gave us some lovely bottles, as you can see there. Uh, infinity bottles there. There they are there. Yeah. Uh, and they are they are absolutely beautiful. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, the uh, show con continues. We're back in the room with that uh, peated Irish whiskey. Just before we go on, that the sharing of that whiskey is it, it, that's really what good quality whiskey should be all be about. You know, I've now we have now had a, a share of Mark's birthday from from twenty seven two thousand seven. Yeah, so it's still the year he was born. So we've actually sort of shared in his birthday party 13 years later and that's something you can't do with really with a tin, tin of beer you know you can't do that no and i'll tell you what i mean i i took a wee snip before i uh, uh gave it to you and uh i thought i was becoming a whiskey guru because i thought this is fantastic and you See, completely agreed big buttery aftertaste of course it was just butter after but you know but I, as, as i explained to you it, it's about that real sense of craft and quality and you can taste it it comes through i mean the idea that one whiskey tastes something like the next is just nonsense you know i mean you're you get this now you understand this you know yeah yeah i'm beginning to understand that this is a scary this is a scary thing because I, I normally i normally don't get anything it normally doesn't go in at all well, uh, no. so listen, listen we're doing peated irish whiskey tonight this is the this is the peat what i mean it that's the peat. Yes. Now, twenty-one percent of Irish landmass was peat bog, or peat, certainly peat at peat, raised peat or peat bog, whatever. Twenty-one percent of all of Ireland. Now think about this. Back in the late eighteenth century, there was lots and lots of very small distilleries in Ireland. There was actually over 1,200 distilleries registered in Ireland, okay? But they were tiny. Most of them were maybe only distilling a 1,000 gallons a year. You know, a very, very little amount of whiskey. But there's a re why do, why do you peat whiskey? Why do you malt barley? Well, the reason you do it is it releases more sugar. It releases more convertible carbohydrate into... That can be converted then by yeast into to alcohol. Now, if you think about it, you've twenty one percent of the whole land mass of Ireland is peat, which if you go, are making little amounts of it, needing little amounts of fuel, that's where you get your fuel from. Okay, people just went and cut it by themselves. They went down to as we would call it the moss. Went down with their spade, cut their, their, their peat out, and took it home with them. So lots and lots of these little distilleries, when they were malting their own barley, what they did was, the, the picture you've put up there is actually a slightly more advanced than, than some of them would have been. Lots of them were little wooden racks with a little pit in below it where you would have burnt the peat and, and, and smoked and dried your barley 
because once barley starts to germinate, you 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 really but don't more like that one. Yeah, more like Matt. Now you show the, the the clip with the bush mills. You see the the little pagoda roof that's on the bush mills that comes up, and there's a little pagoda roof. Those are your, where your malting houses are. The bush mills don't malt their own barley on site anymore, but they did. But when they went, got to a bigger scale in the 19th century, lots of the smaller distilleries have disappeared. The bigger ones, it was actually cheaper for them to import coal from, from England, from Newcastle and that sort of place, to, to heat, to, to get the heat to, to dry their malt rather than going out with a spade and cutting their own their own uh, peat. So the smaller guys would still have been using peat. The bigger guys would have been using coal because it was just economics. It's, on the scale that the big guys would have been using, it was cheaper. Now, the a lot of the big distilleries would have been centred around Dublin. Uh, down in Cork as well, and also up in Belfast. There was lots and lots of, of distilleries. Also lots of ones up in Derry. The two, two, one big one and one not so big one in Derry. Just in terms of economy, they would have been importing coal for, for the mullings. But the smaller guys would still have been using their peat. Now, Lots of these would have been doing it, you would say, illegally. Okay. Now, were the distilleries near where the peat was, uh, uh, and that's why they were peated, like like this map? Well, if you look at the map, look where Dublin is. There's not a lot of peat around Dublin. So, when they were in the in the centre of Ireland, and certainly over in, in Connacht and not many Donegal, peat was abundant I mean you just went out and dug it you know you just cut it out yourself you maybe paid pennies to go and cut out peat so that was why they used it now, even the Bog of Allen right in the, the centre there uh, in Ireland I mean that covers 370 square miles of, of peat bog essentially so I mean why, why would you pay for coal on a small scale the difference was the larger distilleries they would have had to pay someone to go and cut it and dry it and all that kind of stuff. They needed it on demand when they needed it, so they just used coal. And it was, it was cheaper for them to do it. I said in 1780, there was uh, there was 1,228 registered distilleries, but they were only making 1.2 million gallons of whiskey. And some of those were would have been a lot bigger than some of the smaller ones. So, you know, you're talking very little amounts. So just, I mean, basically, that's like a, a moonshine outfit. That, yeah, yeah, less. They'd have been probably a bit more advanced than that, but not much. Okay, there wouldn't have been anything of any major, uh, major amounts. Now, again, why do you peat whiskies? Um, it's the impart flavour. The flavour back in the day would have probably have been a bit of a secondary consideration because they just wanted to dry out the, the, the barley and peat was a free resource. But when you have different sorts of peat, it's made up of different sort of organic matter and depending on the stages of decomposition from the organic matter, it's basically trying to become coal. So it's a stage before it becomes lignite, before it becomes uh, actual coal. Uh, so it's full of organic matter that when it's burnt, certainly when it smokes, it releases these, these chemicals. And you're talking about uh, lignans, as they're called. The, the next stage from peat is lignite. And it's these lignans that then become lignite. Uh, and you have phenolic, the, the chemical composition of it. You have all these phenols, you have carbohydrate, you have... Uh, is that is that the lignite? Is it there? Is it in that in that picture? That's a very primitive uh, molting drying thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you have these different chemicals. You know these long chain 
phenolic polymers, but you just skip past the the, the chemical. There, there we go. That's the right one. Yep. Yeah. So these are this shows you how complicated these uh, molecules are. They come up and, and and put it onto the barley, which then follow all the way through to the distillate, and, and then become. Uh, now the chemistry wouldn't have been known back in the day, but they, they knew what they were tasting. Okay. So, all of these in part, I, I talk often about phenols, and anyone who's ever tasted a Lafroig, it's carbolic acid, no carbolic soap, that kind of smell. It, it, it's chemical, it's like the TCP is another one, but it's kind of sweet. And in, and in small doses, you're really, really sensitive to this. So a very lightly peated whiskey would be two to five parts per million. A peated whiskey would be 12 to 16 parts per million. A very heavily peated whiskey could be up to 50 parts per million. That's how sensitive you are to this chemical. But lots and lots of people find it really nice. Yeah, I mean, it just smells like a bonfire. And lots of people find that really, really nice. But why did Ireland get the reputation it did? I read from a little book that I have here. Whoops, just a page. Some numbers on there. A Dr. Donovan, way back in the 1840s, went out to uh, check on, on, on illicit distilling. He wanted to know what, what actually they were doing. And he wrote that, the distillery was a small thatched cabin at one end of a large turf light kindled on the ground and covered by a semicircle of large stones. Resting on these stones and over the fire was a 40 gallon tin vessel, which answered both for heating the water and the body of the still. So they're heating their houses with the turf. Okay. When it comes to, to actually malting the barley, he wrote, the distiller made his malt by soaking a sack of barley in bog water draining it and causing germination, usually by spreading it on the floor of his cabin. When sufficiently germinated, the grain was taken to a licensed kiln along with a sack of raw corn. The raw corn was spread out in the kiln during the night when the kiln owner had retired to rest and the raw corn was removed and the malt spread on it, dried and replaced by the raw grain before day. The owner of the corn drying up on a kiln sets up on a night to watch it and on his discovery was eluded that the malting was completed. But... He goes on to say that he did not think that the flavour of potting had any relation to the turf smoke at the kiln, which is quite obviously not true because we now know that that's what imparts the flavour. But he's telling us there that that's how they dried out the barley. So they were using the peat back in the 1840s at kilns. Like this? Probably more like that, yeah. So he's, right. telling, he's he's seen this. Now, this is an illicit distiller, but he's also saying that they're getting it dried out at legal stills or legal uh, kilns. So they're actually peating their whiskey. Lots of them have peated whiskey recipes. Okay? Now, as I say, all of these different chemicals go into it. We know Scotch whiskies, lots of them are peated, but actually the majority of them aren't. Where the reputation for peated whiskies come from is really the likes of your Lag of Villains, your Highland Punk, all of these, which are really, really peaty. Isla, repeat it, and that's where that all comes from. Now, I told, I've mentioned this many times before, that Irish whiskey almost totally disappeared you had a couple of big players who stayed on. Your Jameson, Bushmills, that was really, really the only ones that really have stuck the course completely. They didn't peat their whiskies. They were quite big. They didn't. They didn't. They normally didn't peat their whiskies. I'll just put that in as a slight caveat. I'll tell you why in a minute. 
Oh, okay, so are you saying people thought it was painted, but it wasn't, or they pretended it painted, what it wasn't, or, or, or what are you saying, Marty? What I'm because saying, lots and lots of whiskey being produced in certain areas that was painted, but when Irish whiskey industry collapsed, before it collapsed, it had a number of big players, Bushmills. They didn't paint their whiskey. They were a big player. They they imported steam and coal and gas and, and over the over the history. Neither did Jameson. Neither did any you know any of the ones that actually stuck around because they were the big players. So they kind of called the shots. And in some ways, it's the same thing as as what has happened with the pot still. Pot still whiskey is a mix of different grains, not just single malted barley. Okay. And the big players. If you're the only, if you're the last man standing, you call the shots. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a sort of a little bit of a misconception that Irish whiskey also didn't um, didn't embrace the column still the the, the continuous twenty four seven distillation. That's not really true. Dunvilles, that was why Dunvilles stayed until the nineteen thirties. They they were still making money when they closed in the nineteen thirties. One of the reasons was they had column stills in there. And what they did was they actually exported that to Scotland to make their money. So the type of whiskey that Ireland was known for was still the big players. And they made this very light sort of style of whiskey. In Scotland, most of this whiskey in Scotland is not peated. But it has this reputation that it is. And it's not actually true. It's a bit of a stereotype. It's like most stereotypes are not actually 100% true. Okay, okay. Right, so how did it get, how did it get that? Uh... Just pe people, people, um, they took to this sort of Peter Irish, or Peter Scottish style. And it was very easy for certainly people in the US, the bootleggers, if you buy a, a barrel of cheap alcohol and pour in some uh, Lefroy, I'm with you. Barrel will taste of Lefroy. So it kind of got this reputation that it didn't really deserve. I'm uh, with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. It's, it's sort of renowned for being quite light, but that was because the big players were, were exporting this. At home, the big players were selling lots of whiskey. But there was also an awful lot of illicit stuff going on. And as the smaller guys got cut out for various reasons, all the way up until the, the 19th, well, sort of the, the latter part of the 19th century, all these little ones were disappearing. But before that, they would have been, they would have been too small. They started buying tons of coal in from, from Newcastle. So they just used peat. So we're halfway through the show tonight, Marty. That's the good news. <laughs> I don't know where it goes. Mm. Uh, but we better do some of the mentions. Jordy Burke, a good evening uh, from Prince Edward Island, Canada. Hello. Thank you very much, uh, Jordy. Remember to comment, like, and share. Irish Whiskey Review on YouTube especially. Uh, so, uh, oh, did... Did you pick a winner yet? Did you pick a winner yet for, for the hundredth person? We'll, 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 we'll do that at the end of this wee segment, Marty. Uh, yep. uh, Julie Mason's on. Wonderful Irish peated whiskey. Does she see the hench peated there? Not just yet. Stay tuned. I, 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 I thought Amazon brought the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Michael Matthews is saying... Uh, Shame Connemara stopped their Turf Moor version. He was a big fan. Yep. Lovely stuff. Uh, uh, m m why would they stop if Peter's on the on the way back up again? Who knows, Justin? Who knows? These, okay. these pe people make these corporate decisions and that's what happens. You know? Yeah. And there's uh, James Moore. Johnny. Johnny Walker is so big that his taste is seen as synonymous with scotch, and it's peated. Might have something to do with that. That's a, a good analysis there. Very yeah. good analysis. Very uh, true. Yeah. You know, we'll have to start charging James Moira Doherty consultancy fees for, 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 or he'll have to be, we'll have to give him consultancy fees rather. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so th there you go. So there's there's a lot of. I'm not going to do all the hellos tonight because there's just too many of them. Uh, yeah, we we know that Facebook has been having weird issues. Thank you very much for, for Terry. We do know that because actually your picture isn't appearing there, but it's just black. Facebook's having issues. I would say it's because the elections are coming up and the <laughs> Russians are trying to work their magic. <laughs> sure, sure, we got report, we got reported for nudity just on another show. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. We'll tell them about this. Okay. So you've watched this show. How many weeks have we been doing it? Uh, 12, 15? I don't know. We've done it a lot of weeks. The, Marty's correct. We have been reported multiple times for news today. And we, we, we thought, you know, one of you wise guys was clicking the report button for new today. Uh, but uh, Marty eventually got to speak to the, the wee person that, that deals with these things, Mark Zuckerberg. And, uh, they wouldn't explain it. They just said, oh, oh no, you, but it's just an algorithm. Now, I'm pretty sure that I have clothes on. And I'm pretty sure Marty has clothes on. So how would anybody think we were naked, especially as we're sitting? And you can't really see the important bits in men because we, <laughs> we could have shorts on now and you wouldn't know, like that RTE news reporter doing yeah. the, the news report the other day. So yeah. where did that come from? Can you Can you believe that? A guy from Malaysia actually rang me to, to find out if, uh, if, <laughs> if, there, was, if there was something uh, about me being nude on the thing. A boy from Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, Mark Kerr has said it's shiny head syndrome. I have makeup on. I have makeup on. What do, what do I put my makeup on? So, so, say, I put my makeup on. Say, I put, I put my makeup on so, so, so I don't have a shiny head. There we go. You know, it doesn't work. It only works in TV if you get the right stuff. Um, shiny head syndrome. You, you are you are right, uh, Mark. It could be that. It could be. It could be the shiny head. But I think it's a bit better than that. It 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 it, it, it could have been a listener living in hope. Hint hint, lads. <laughs> ah, boy, you, 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 we're not making this up. By the way, it's absolutely true. And there's Claire Louise Russell. Used to live in Northern Ireland, missed the accent. I don't know where Claire Louise Russell is because I can't see it here. I'm maybe looking at my phone. Uh, Russell is not, it's not a, a, an, an English, Scottish, Welsh, or Irish name, is it? Is it are you French? Hold on, we'll, 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 we'll look it up to see to see who she is. We we'll see this is where you have no privacy, you see, because you we, we can see the comments, you see. So, uh We'll, we'll look up Claire, Claire Russell because I'm Hello. always interested to know she might be she might be near that Canadian and Prince Edward Island. Could be, could be. Uh, let me see. We'll, we'll look this up because uh, just as a matter of interest. So where were we, Marty? We're doing Irish peated whiskey this week, and right. uh, where were we? You will have noticed this is all Scottish whiskey. Yeah, moving out out with the old. And with the new. Ta da! <laughs> Hello, friend. No, please, James. These are Irish peated whiskies. Now, they're not, they're, there's more Irish peated whiskies. Connemara was mentioned there earlier on. Um, Connemara has sort of been a, a store. It's been going for, I'm sure, 20 years now. And it's a, a it's a quite a, not massively heavily peated whiskey, but it's it's peated enough. Um, but these are kind of all new. Hinch peated. Mm -hmm. I am I am a big fan of this. I think it's very very good. Dark silky. We had that one. It was right. it was an eight out of ten or maybe more. Oh, it's fabulous stuff. This is two stacks. You weren't too sure about it, were you? And you... I, I, this is this is this is good. It's quite good, but uh, it kind of misses it a little bit for me. But it's got peat in it, two percent peat, it, aged in bourbon casks. We have Bill Phil, another little one again, peat, it. and there's a few others. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch on the little one, Matt. There's more and more peat Irish whiskies coming out, and. And they're kind of carving out a little bit of a niche for themselves. Um, I, 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 I like peat, but there's lots of people don't. There's lots of people just 
cannot have it. And that's, you can't please everybody. That's why Pepsi exists. Because if Coke was just perfect, everybody would just drink Coke. Pepsi has to be there as well. So these are all coming on. Now, some of them are blends. Some of them are, are single malts. So you have these. <laughs> You're laughing, Justin. I take it I'm, a I'm sorry. You know, when you changed the set there, the thought... I, Isla Sinclair was going to come in like Larry Grayson. Uh, does, <laughs> d, 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 does does Murray not have staff to do that for him? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 and then we're, we're getting more feedback from Claire Louise Russell. She's she's in Plymouth and she oh. collects the Navy whiskey. Hobby with, is in the forces. Uh, and then jo, Jody Burke was going to ask about the Scottish bottles on there, but the topic was Irish whiskey. That's where... It's Irish comes from. That's where that that, that comes from. Uh, it is about Irish whiskey. Yes, it is about Irish. We're ex we're explaining it. We're explaining it. All Just right. In case Jordy doesn't know, Isla's kind of the spiritual home of Scotch whiskey, and that's yeah. all. Pete, thing. You can see Isla from my house, from my doorstep of an evening as the sun goes down. I can see the paps of Jura, and just in front of it is Isla. So. That tells you how close I'm in Ireland, but I can see Scotland. Uh, I, I, I can almost see Campbelltown. I can you know, Mull of Kintyre and the parts of Jura and stuff from the house. So, can, can, uh, can I show them the picture? Yeah, it all depends what. Is. Don't get us reported for nudity again. Is it? Is it no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would I would show them the picture, but I don't think it's working because when I hit add image there, it wasn't doing it for some reason. What is that all about tonight? Yeah. What is all that? Maybe I have privacy on, and that's the problem. Yeah. It might be it might be something to do with privacy. Could be, could be. No, 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 no idea. That's that's most most strange, most strange indeed. What I'll do is I'll send it from my phone while we answer some of these questions, and and because we have only twenty minutes to go, where were we, Marty? Uh, Michael Massey is saying there's more stock in there than than, than the Tesco's. Uh, <laughs> Stanley yeah. Sun is, is is saying he's a big fan of the dark silky. Uh, Claire Louise Russell is laughing, and Jody Burke thinks the whole thing is very, very cool indeed. It is. It's not as cool as Canada in the winter time, but it's pretty cool. I'm, so I'm laughing at Stanley. Stanley saying that uh, Stanley Sun saying that he's a fan of the dark silky. Yes, he drove all the way down from Ballymena to the distillery to go and get get a bottle of it. So that shows you how good he thinks it is. Wow. Um, good. Good. Because he brought me that, up. That that is that that is a, a, some some dedication there indeed. Some dedication uh, indeed. What I'm now, saying, is, there is all of these new Irish peated whiskies coming out, which I'm I'm all for. I I'm a genuine fan of peat. I think it's I think it's fabulous stuff. I poured myself out and um, yeah, hench there, lovely sweet. Loads of people think that peat. I mean, the colour of it, uh, it should be sort of very dark and and, and and almost treacly or something, you know. And if they don't, if you smell this, if you nose this, it's very light. It's very, it, it's very, quite heavily peated, but it's fresh with peat. And I know that some people might find that a little bit odd, but it's that clean, sort of carbolic, phenolic, Flavor, which is really really nice in in the dosage that it's at. I look, I, I think Hinch is really really good. Bill Phil's really good. The two stacks is is good. This is a little bit for me. The dark silky. We are a big fan of this. There's so there's more and more pita Irish malts coming along. And that's from so, this is the view from the front of Marty's house. Mm. Yeah, Mar Marty lives in Glen Arm Castle. <laughs> he was. No, 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 Justin. I live above the castle. I live okay. in the castle. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. So it's it's a pretty fantastic view. And you're looking down the Anton coaster. When it's clear, the Paps of Jura are high up above and, well, just over the horizon. Uh, how many miles would it be away, Marty? Would it be 50, would it be? I don't think it's even as much as I think it's about 35 miles, I think, roughly. So, not much more than that. So what about that for a view from his house? That is a view to behold. And basically, we're in the last throes of summer, and I took that during the week there, and that's fantastic. So there we go. So pe people can know, people go on Google Maps and be driving around like a mad thing trying to find where you live. Anybody like 
the tool, feel free, stop at the door, come on in and get a drink. Plenty of it. Plenty of it. No, so I'm talking about Irish whiskey. And this, people think this is something new, but there was a very, very, a few months ago, I, I got a wonderful offer. I, I, I was told that I could enter into a competition, a raff, a draw. And if I won it, I would have been fortunate enough to be eligible to put a thousand euro deposit on a bottle of whiskey, non-refundable. And then I would have had seven days to find the rest of the money to buy the bottle. There's only 44 bottles of it. And it's the oldest Irish whiskey ever sold, sold by Middleton. And I would have had seven days to find 36,000 euros to go on top of my other thousand euros. Now, needless to say, I graciously declined <laughs> that offer. Is, I, this the, is this the one I have a picture of, or is that a different one? It is. This one? Yes. This is Middleton Very Rare Silent Distillery Batch Number One. Okay? This would have set you back €37,000. It's a 45-year-old single malt from the old Middleton Distillery. Okay? The new Middleton Distillery, Irish Distillers, Jameson, Redbreast, all of that. Biggest distillery, biggest whiskey producer in Ireland by an absolute country mile. This is from the old distillery that, that closed. This was distilled in 1974. Uh, all good things were distilled in 1974, Justin. Like, were they? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I, oh. I was only born in 1983, Marty, so I wouldn't <laughs> remember the 70s. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, get on. Anyway. <laughs> so, this... Thirty-seven thousand pound bottle, thirty-seven thousand euro bottle of whiskey is peated, Justin. It's a peated single malt, which goes to show you that even in the nineteen seventies, they were still peating Irish whiskey. So we know that they were that they were peating barley in the eighteenth century. We know they were peating barley in the nineteenth century. And now we know that they are peating, peating Irish whiskey in the 20th century. Now we also know they're peating Irish whiskey in the 21st. So what I'm saying is Irish whiskey being peated has never really gone away. It's always been there. But because it's shrank to such a small category, such a small amount, it got this reputation, a sort of stereotype, that it wasn't, that it was all triple the style, all very light, all very little body. Um, and it's just not true. It's just not true. Okay, right. So we've about 15 minutes left tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd better do some of the other mentions. Uh, uh, <laughs> here, listen. Uh, Jordy Burke saying, think when COVID is over, party at Justin's. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Listen, I was supposed to go out to a party tonight, but they've downgraded it from, uh, you know, uh, six people to just two people from two. Well, six people from two households. So it's uh, it's it's uh, well. What can I say? I, I, I don't want Marty will tell me off if I say alcohol kills it, but it does. <laughs> it does, but just not that way. Don't over yeah. don't don't overdo the booze. It's very easy to overdo the booze and lockdown. You might think that we have a glass of Guinness every single night, and you're completely wrong. We have two. No, we don't. Uh, please drink responsibly. Now, uh, Frank Hearn was saying there. Uh, he was saying there's no such thing as a bad whiskey. I completely agree. Uh, just one that makes a good cocktail, or one that needs Coke as a mixer. Definitely Coke as a mixer, or Mountain Dew. Never, ever look as aid, Red Bull, or Pepsi. He, and it has to be from a bottle that's glass, not one of those you found me things. <laughs> <laughs> the Exorcist, my, my, my old neighbour who, who used to make all my spirits disappear, he drinks whiskey and ginger. Uh, there's, not, and, there's nothing wrong with that because we, 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 know, we know where the ginger came from, don't we? Yes. Yes, yes. 
it, it came from Belfast. But what I will say is, I can't really argue with him because he does drink so, so much of it that uh, he must know what he's talking about, you know? Here, listen, somebody's saying, and we know why he's saying, he's a Jimmy uh, Cotter saying, good choice in the hench. Any questions, just shout. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Send us up, send us up the case of it, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, we, we know that we know the watch this show. We know the watch this show. But uh, can I just say, can I tell you another thing as well? There's a few other um, peated whiskies out there. Uh, and what they do is they buy uh, X peated whiskey casks. Now, there's a couple out there. Uh, and I don't particularly like saying that, but I don't think it really works that well. I'm totally honest. Uh, there's They buy an X Isla whiskey cask and put their, their spirit in it. And, and it takes on a sort of phenolic taste, but it's not really smoked, if you know what I mean. Um, so it's just something to be a little bit a little bit aware of that you can see ones that are uh, peat influenced, if you like. And it, to me, it just works <laughs> He says, "No worries, I'll send up a case, an empty case." Sorry, um, right. I've got a head case, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> You're terrible. You're terrible. You're terrible. Uh, right. Uh, what was I going to say? Claire's asking, is okay. tonic all right with whiskey? Uh, um, it's up to yourself. Up to yourself. Put it like this. I tend not to put too much. I put water in some of them uh, regularly. But um, remember, we did a, a show called Bad Whiskey. And there's a, a, few, a few bad whiskeys. That feel free to put anything you like in them. Um, furry liquid, <laughs> tonic. Please don't uh, drink furry liquid. Uh, uh, tonic doesn't really work with whiskey at all. I mean, I, I've never heard of that before. But people drink whatever they want, just entirely up to themselves. You can maybe put Kaylee water in it. That might work. Work. In, 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 in. Do you remember what Kaylee water is, Claire Louise Russell? Do you Kaylee water? I <laughs> no, you don't. Yeah. No, it's maybe a tiny. Uh, so there you, there you go. Uh, wh 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 whiskey threat, whiskey treat, or whiskey threat? What's that? Whiskey, whiskey, and a threat. So you put too much on minute. All right. Okay. Very good. I've never heard that expression before in my life. Whiskey and a threat. That's where you basically threaten to kill the whiskey. All right, very good. Never, never heard that before. Claire Louise Russell, you look a lot older than you look in your picture. You're maybe like me. You're maybe lying about your age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we know you love clam club lemon. I like club lemon. A fizzy saw. I'm going to try club lemon. I might have some club lemon down there, and I'll, I'll go and get some bush mills, and I'll I'll, I'll do that tonight. Actually. Uh, Jordy Burke's asking a good question about Kilbegan. So now's the time you get your questions in because we've only got 10 minutes left. And remember, Marty, you have to say who won the uh, the little miniature for Be the 100 subscriber on YouTube because we want you to go to YouTube, Ari's Whiskey Review, and subscribe. Do it now. Do it now. Uh, yep. Jordy Burke's saying, yes, does Kilbegan have a peated? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, Kilbegan. Kilbegan is a strange little distillery. Uh, because it's owned by uh, Kelly, and they've only they, they do distill there, but it's only recently they've brought out their their two their two own distillery right. products, if you like. They they used to distill a little bit there and then mix it with Kelly and all that kind of jazz, but now they've brought out a pot still and a rye. And pot still's pot still's good. Uh, the rye. Uh, it, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I wasn't that blown away by, but I don't think they have any Peter. I don't think they have any plans for any either. Uh, and there's a few wise guys are on saying, Eamon Hergerty's asking James Moira Dockery, uh, what would be a good whiskey to put in Club Lemon? I, I'm, going to, I'm going to preempt them and say, he'll say, still. No, no, he, he doesn't mean his own. He doesn't mean his own. But uh, <laughs> yes, it, um, 
yeah, well, what, what, what do you want to drown the taste of? But not that one. Not that. Not that one. That's too nice. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it with the dark salty. But I'm going to say, it's I'm, going to, nice. I'm, going to, I'm going to suggest that's what you can make that. Okay, right. Okay, now I'm going to say something really controversial tonight, which <laughs> may may get us fined. Okay, Murray's petrified. Evening, lads. What's the difference between Pete and Turf? Well, Pete's Protestant. And turfs Catholic. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a good Turkey joke. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That, 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 that's just too good to miss. I'm sorry. I had to do that one. Whenever do that. Sometimes you tell Americans, whenever they see, I say Americans, tell everybody, uh, whenever they see the L plate and an R plate, and you say, oh, this guy's a loyalist and that boy's a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's good. That, that's that's a good one. That is very good. Sorry, sorry, we, we couldn't resist that one. Please write in. What, Please what, write in. Because I, 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 I want your man Stephen that always defends comedy to uh, so give us a tweet, you know? Who, 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 who? Stephen who? Nolan. Stephen Fry. <laughs> <laughs> that was Stephen Nolan. No, that's that Stephen Nolan. I wouldn't want him to tweet us. I wouldn't <laughs> want him to tweet us. He'd tell us off for encouraging partying. Um, <laughs> Pete and turf. Pete is a very specific thing. Turf could mean just any sort of soil, but soil doesn't necessarily mean it's peat. Okay, so it, it, it's peat's a very specific thing. Turf basically is any sort of soil, so it doesn't necessarily have. Well, you can't you can't burn soil, but some people talk about turf as cutting the turf, dry it out, it becomes the peat, and, and then you and then you burn it. But it, it it's it's inter it's inter it's interchangeable, right? Okay, it's inter yeah. it's it's one of those interchangeable things. This, this is this is peat sphagnum moss peat is what that is, and doesn't smell of it. It looks, if you say a little bit of it down, it looks very much like something that a dog has left behind. But <laughs> I wouldn't like to meet the dog that leaves behind something as big as that. It would a, be Bar Barkley the giant dog or something like that there. Uh, what was he called? Digby, the biggest dog in the world. Remember that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, I, I've seen that one before. Seen that one before. Um, so listen, we've got uh, eight minutes left. Uh, everybody's laughing at the jokes, thankfully. The, the, the numbers went up in viewership, not dying. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've got to ask you, we, we, we got the target of, of 100 on YouTube, Marty. Uh, we're, we're, we're actually past it now, 113 or 14, 115. We, we, we're, we're, we're aiming for 250,000 by 2025. Yes. Uh, 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 Murray has already committed to say there will be a special prize at the, at the big milestones on the way. Okay. Um, for the 100, I got some. For a thousand, we'll get some. For a hundred thousand, I'll get some. And then once we hit the million, Justin, once we hit the million, then we'll, we'll be too big. We'll not, we'll not care about uh, the little, the little people anymore. You know, we'll be like Kim Kardashian. We'll not really can, care. Can I, can I get a power boat then? Can I? Oh yes. Oh no problem. I, I love. Uh, I, I love one I, I got my eye on a Riva 600. It costs a quarter of a million. So, they, no? Yeah, no. I, I want one of the, the Lotus Elise uh, James Bond boats, you know, the submarine boat that he... Oh, car. right. Oh, yeah. I don't think that really exists. Don't think it really exists. No. <laughs> so, listen, who who won it? Did you pick the winner yet? Did you? I, I didn't pick the winner, Justin. They they were the 100th person. And it was a, a guy from Ballymena called Dusty Miller. And I will see him on Tuesday. Okay. okay. Is, is, is he any relation to Wendy Miller from, uh, from Wendy Miller's uh, half step brother? Is he? All right. Yeah, I, I, I remember that program. Uh, let me let me see. Oh, the, the, the comments are coming in thick and fast in the last five minutes of the show. Do you know what we're doing next week? Because you did mention to me that we're doing uh, another tasting. You've got one on the pipeline, do you? Yeah. Well, what I'm going to do this week, I am going to go and see a chef this week. Uh, uh, a guy I, I know. Oh look, I've mentioned food. That Justin's eyes have lit up. Uh, food, food. <laughs> uh, uh, but sure, I only ever have nuts with my whiskey. Well, well, yes, you were down here yesterday, oh, and you Chris. had sausage, sausage pie, uh, potatoes, coleslaw, and a bit of salad. Then I made you a uh, Thai soup, 
with uh, noodles and stuff. So I mean, yeah, healthy yesterday. You weren't too bad yesterday. Actually, do you know what? Do you know what my uh, calorie counter said? It mm. act, it actually said that I hadn't eaten enough calories yesterday because you walked me two miles around the forest. So <laughs> you saw a red squirrel. So what? What, what do you want? Well, I did see a red squirrel. We actually will probably show you the red squirrel footage, but we'll show you the the, the yeah. sausage pie just in case, just in case people get the wrong wrong idea. There's a sausage pie, right? Uh, okay, there's the sausage pie. Some nice potatoes. Uh, some, I think it was rocket with that uh, balsamic uh, and, and a wee bit of cold slot as well. Uh, the tea emporium in Glenorm, very good, by the way. You get a proper proper pot of tea, proper pot of tea. In a proper teacup, much to be a congratulated. This is I, I wholeheartedly endorse this kind of thing. What, 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 what product placement? There you go. There's the tea emporium. Look, there it is. There, the, the art house tea emporium. We'll give yes. them a mention too. So, um, listen, we'll, we'll better, we'll better, we'll better wrap up. Um, what were you saying? So, we're we're, we're going to do a food tasting. No, what we're going to do next week is I'm going to go and speak to one of one of. I consider one of the top chefs in Northern Ireland, uh, and he, I'm going to take down some whiskies for him because he's not a whiskey guy. He, he has tried a few whiskies I've sent him and stuff, and, and he, he he thought they were very good. So I'm going to take down some bottles. He's going to try them and have a, a look at them and think to himself, mm, this might go with this or that. Try that with that, so on and so forth. So not going to be eating any food. He's just going to make recommendations. So. Watch that space, and uh, maybe in a few months' time, I might get uh, get him to make up some dishes and stuff. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm lo I'm looking forward to this. We could we could be the next unhurry bikers. We could be the bald baristas. The bald baristas. That's that's what I'm going to call us from now on. The bald baristas. I I'm, I'm clean shaven by choice, Justin. Mine's mine's is optional. Uh, I think we should go with the <laughs> the clean the clean shaven connoisseurs would maybe be a better one. Rather than I'm going to put my hat on again. Um, <laughs> let, let, let me see. Uh, one last question here. Do you think regionality will come back, Marty, or will everyone do a bit of peated? Well, all I'm going to say is this. We have, in Ulster, uh, the northern province of, of Ireland, we have Sleeve League, who are doing peated. Um, I think they're doing double distilled. We have Dunvals, who I know are doing double distilled. We have the Radaman Estate down, uh, David and Fiona down at Short Cross. They're doing double distilled. People are doing double distilled up in the north, and I can see a sort of, almost a slight regionality in in Ulster, where you're getting a bit more of the double distilled, possibly some peated. You know that you can kind of see where there's a sort of style, almost beginning. And I, I'd I'd love, I'd, I personally would love to see that. I'd love to see a little bit of regionality in. Ireland as well as in Scotland, you know. All right, there's Julie Mason saying another great show tonight. Frank Heron saying, if you need help, I'm available for the fruit, food. Uh, brilliant show as uh, as always. Thanks for the mention. Yes, sorry about the audio quality, but we we couldn't do it again. We did. We uh, we I, I, about, didn't we, Justin? It was our my next door neighbours were wearing wireless uh, headphones, and they had it must have had a broadcaster in the thing. We, it, it, it may have been that, but it, it may have been that. All sorts of things can interfere with it, but it's supposed to be clear. But on paper, it looks, the needles look normal, but there's a, the high pitch wine behind it. So sorry about that, folks. Yep. Uh, the subtitles will do a great job of putting words in our mouth, okay? So don't worry, <laughs> don't worry about that. There's supposed to be subtitles on that, but they weren't showing up for some reason. Uh, another great show tonight. Uh Thanks for the crack. There you go. You're get, getting plenty of mentions. They're coming in thick and fast tonight. Uh, I think we haven't missed anybody out. Make sure you like and share it around the whiskey community in Canada, and we probably will get round to doing a Canadian special one night, yeah? Possibly. Possibly. We'll see. From the mate of the mist. Yeah. But, but like I guess we have to get Canadian right. Uh, just drop in a little mention. Jim Murray and his whiskey and, and his whiskey Bible that he brings out every every year. Uh, I'll not, I'll not class lots of comment on it, but this year a Canadian rye was his favourite whiskey in the world. So 
Yeah. Yes, that's right. And there's Kit Charles at saying is sleeve league in Ulster. Yes, yeah. Ulster is what Ulster is uh nine <laughs> counties, but Northern Ireland's only six. Donegal is in Ulster. Don't be don't, please don't start. Please don't do a BBC on us this week. We have uh Ulster was is nine counties. The state of Northern Ireland was six counties. So if we ever go down to three counties, we'll end up as a continent of our own, you know. We <laughs> see the same the, the, the It's all very strange, but anyway. Just remember, no man's an island. There you go. Uh, so, uh, well done. Uh, good stuff. Thank you very much. Sorry I didn't put everybody on screen this week because there's just too many comments and I'm only putting on the really good ones, okay? So you have to come up with good ones. If you're saying hello or tagging a friend, I'm going to leave them out. Thank you very much, Marty. Catch you again soon. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.